This is my first ever journal. And if you would have came to me 11 years ago and said, journaling will be the number one thing that will change your life, I would have told you you were crazy. But I stand corrected. In this video, I wanna answer one of the most common questions I get in the comments, how? Look, there is a million and one different methods you could choose from, but I wanna select five that I would recommend you start with, and we'll go over them in this video. I'll also splice in some uh, BTS clips of like inside the journals in case you want real examples. So these are my five favorite methods and recommendations of where you can start. Method number one, this is what I would just label as free writing, and it's the simplest and easiest to grasp. You take out a journal, you open a blank page, and you just let it rip. A more structured version of this is called Morning Pages. This is an exercise I got from Julia Cameron, who wrote a beautiful book, The Artist's Way. It's about getting over your inner critic, your own blocks to create. So Morning Pages is a stream of consciousness type of writing, where you just take what's in here and you put it on here. Now what's the benefit of that? There's a couple. The first is understand that like most of your thoughts are not conscious, they're subconscious. It's like air bubbles in the water that bubble up to the surface. That's like a deep insecurity or thought or doubt you have and then boom, it bubbles up to your conscious mind and you think about it, something triggers it. But it's beneath the surface creating it. And so when you're able to put them on here, the second benefit I got from doing that, you just walk away feeling lighter. Like, have you ever had a conversation with a friend and you talk about what's bothering you and then afterwards, even if you don't solve it, the venting alone made you feel like, you know what, maybe I was looking at that wrong. You know what, maybe I'm being dramatic. And you go throughout your day with that feeling, it carries over. There's one rule with morning pages, you're not allowed to read it for at least eight months. That's enough time to look back and feel like it's sort of a different person who wrote that or you were in a different stage. Here's a good time to explain my methodology of journaling. We have longer breakdowns if you want a full setup guide on this channel, but I can explain it to you here in a couple seconds. When I got started journaling, I was keeping several and one was on business notes, one was on personal like brain dump notes, one was on health and wellness trackers. And I was looking at these six journals and I'm like, what happened? happens if I just combine them into one. So over a decade ago, I came up with what I call the six in one journaling method. Very simple, it's where you take a journal and you divide it into six sections. Each section is about 20 pages or so, and you title it, and then you fill that section with whatever the title is. Now these sections are custom to you, they can be about anything. For example though, I have ones on my business, ideas, marketing uh, concepts, YouTube videos. I have one on brain dumping, where it's the first method I mentioned in this video. The only thing with your sections that you should worry about is if you're gonna use them. So if it's your first time, I recommend starting with three. What are the three areas you journal about the most or would like to? The other part of this is the front and the back cover, which I will talk about next. The two most important parts for me in this journal aren't actually what I write in it, but it's on the front and the back cover. Your front cover is where you write all the big 1% lessons that you learned that year. Try and make these like quotable and punchy like one-liners, zingers. For example, only that which can truly destroy itself is totally alive. Carl Jung. Inside suffering is the seed of change. When the heart is open, tears flow. Success is doing half a dozen things really well, repeated 5,000 times. Who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakes. Make the world a better place by making yourself a better person. Woof, we could just go on and on and on. Let me know if you wanna see a video on these. The top 1% you're putting there. Now, why would you put this right in the front cover? Well, again, your subconscious is programmed through repetition and strong emotion. And so one of the ways, it's an easy hack when you open your journal, you're glancing at it. And so if you're gonna journal daily or weekly, every single time you open it, you see those. That makes sense? Now, what about the back cover? What do you put here? This is where you list all your goals, the goals you are working on for the year. Again, I do swap my journal every single year, so it's like starting fresh. And I love that because you can look back on goals and see what you checked off and see if you're leveling up like a game. But you can divide goals into work, rest, and play. Work goals, what are the metrics, numbers you're going after, making a certain amount of money, saving a certain amount of money, achievement-based. Rest, what are the personal goals? 
uh, things that you want to achieve personally this year, maybe health goals, family goals, giving to people, contributing, and then play goals. What do you wanna do for fun? Are there any trips? Are there any hobbies? Are there any adventures? Work, rest, play. You put that in the back cover and you check it off as you go out throughout the year. Front and back cover, super underutilized in my opinion. And uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite ways I've journaled. Now, as you keep this habit of journaling up, you're gonna start to amass more and more of them. One of the best habits you can do is not worry about cramming and filling more up, but it's reflecting on old ones. So what I do about once a quarter, so every three months or so, I'll spend two hours one morning and I'll go back through and transfer like big ideas or lessons from my old journals. That one little tip I have found been massive for insights or when you're veering off course just a little bit and it's like you can redirect yourself and get back on track. You'll notice patterns that you thought you dealt with and they're showing up today currently for you. It's a very humbling and eye-opening realization. You will not get that in therapy, in coaching, talking with a friend, unless you're extremely self-aware. And if you were already aware of it, you'd probably be actively changing it. Oof. This is not the expensive incense, let me tell you. It's like the ones they dump in gasoline. At least it burns. The next method. I would label these as notes. You ever notice that when you're reading a book, you, you like highlight everything or you're really inspired? And then if you look at that book a month later, you're like, yeah, that book was really good. I'm not sure why I liked it so much. I can maybe tell you one or two things about it. How did I apply that in my life? Did I apply that in my life? Should I reread the whole thing? That's where this section comes in. Anything that you've consumed for educational purposes, you put in this section. All right, so briefly on the book notes section, just to show you, not tell you, I'll give you an example. Here we have a book, The Happiness Hypothesis. You know it's good when we got the double cover, right? Jonathan Haidt, great author. So this is one I've been through three or four times, starting in 2014. And so what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll read and highlight anything that sticks out in the major points and things that would make for good YouTube content as well, which is an important note. Like I read cause part of it's my job. So you don't have to do this this intensely. Okay. Now, if it's a bad book, I'll stop reading it. But if it's a book that I'm super interested in and getting a lot from, that's when I go crazy. And if it's a book, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I'll do this. I have a section in my journal called student, and this is where I put any notes from courses, books, etc. So I will just go chapter by chapter. Chapter one notes, chapter two, chapter three. Here's an example of cognitive distortions that I got from chapter three, where he's talking about the nine ones they use in CBT. Incredibly useful to reference. I've used that a lot personally and professionally. And I know I have videos reading hundreds of books. Again, that's like my job. It's pretty cool, I get paid to read. Don't get caught in the trap of reading more for the sake of more ego reading. It's not a flex how many books you have on your shelf. You get more benefit reading one book 10 times than 10 okay books one time. So what are those 10 books for you? Do this exercise in your journal, it's helped immensely. Hope that helps kind of clarify how a reading section breakdown would look for you. Next method of journaling, these are prompts. So sometimes staring at a blank page is very intimidating. Having journaling prompts that elicit deeper thinking from you. I'll throw out a bunch here, take whatever you want, leave what you don't. What's working? Love that question. What's going well for you? Not only does this prime you to look for what is working so you can get more of it, but gratitude also is one of the most life-giving, fulfilling emotions. Like when you're truly grateful for people or things or yourself, you get so much positivity from that. The second, what's not working? Equally as important, be honest. What's not where you want it to be? What are the three things you could stop doing? What are the three things that are holding you back the most? Who in your life is holding you back? Your ideal day five years from now. Flash forward, it's five years in the future. What does your perfect Saturday look like? Who are you spending it with? What do you fill your time with? What hobbies are you doing? Who do you have around you? If I have a specific problem, I ask, what would this look like if it were easy? I got that from Tim Ferriss, like, I don't know, over 10 years ago, and constantly realize I'm making things way harder than they need to be. What distractions get in the way of me being most productive? What do I know today that I didn't last year? If someone described me, what would they say? How would they describe me? What can wait till next week? What can't wait till next week? And if you just type in Google best journaling prompts for self-growth, 
you will find probably a dozen more. I'll link up down below 11 questions to change your life. This is old. I hope the link still works, uh, but this is something I put together with 11 of my favorite journaling questions that I use. So if you want that, it's 100% free. Just put in your email and it'll get sent to you. I'll link that in the description below. Again, fingers crossed, hope it still works. Well, it looks too QVC. The order in the next five minutes. Here's a good time to talk about a frequently asked question. Clark, how do I build the habit of journaling? How much should I journal? How do I stay consistent with journaling? And while it's great to want to be consistent with things, I find that that question is why people quit. See, the more you approach journaling, or any tool for that matter, as something you have to do or you have to be consistent with, I notice the more resistance it creates. Now the whole reason you're doing this is not because you have to, but it's for you. And so I always say, you journal out of inspiration, not out of obligation. And that is the one reason I have been able to keep up a decade plus habit, despite trying lots of other habits and you know they'd fizzle out. This habit has stuck around because I never had any rules around it. I never had quotas. I never like had to do it on a Monday at seven. Okay, I have to journal. I just find that builds up such a goodwill association when you look at it. I don't know. I feel like a lot of self-improvement habits can get tiring and don't make journaling another thing you have to do. You get to do it. It's your choice. And you'll also think, what else in my life can I approach with this mindset? And that's how you build a badass life that you love, filled with things that you like doing and don't have resistance towards. And with that, here's the next method. This is what I would call self-coaching. Look, therapy is amazing, but it's very hard to find a good therapist. And if you switch, you kind of have to like re-explain all your problems to them. And the context is a lot. And you kind of like have to get to know them a bit. Really not unsimilar to dating where you have to like kind of tell your life story. And then a month or two in, you're like, yeah, this isn't really a good use of time. Again, there's amazing therapists out there. There's amazing coaches out there. But what I have found a lot of benefit from is self-coaching, coaching yourself. And that really is the entire goal of journaling, in my opinion, is to be your own coach. Because you know all the context that you could ever know about your current situation, and you know all the things you're struggling with, all the fears, all the doubts. Now, I'm not saying this is a replacement to therapy and coaching, because I think a lot of times, too, having a third party to walk you through your thought process and be like, ah, maybe you're seeing it wrong. Let's turn and look this way at the problem. That's invaluable. But I've also found, as someone who's been in therapy and coaching, that 80% of the benefit I've gotten from it has been just hearing myself talk, having a space where you're uninterrupted, where it's all about you, and there's no like agenda where you have to like ask them about themselves or anything with like friendships or family. Not that that's bad because you care, but it's uninterrupted time for you to hear yourself talk through your problems. So this strategy for journaling is just opening up a blank page and write as if you're in a therapy or coaching session. I've heard some people's variations of this where you can act as if there's someone, uh, you of like five, 20 years down the road, who's having like a Q and A with you. It's a good frame. But I think a much simpler question is what advice would I give someone else in this same situation? So write about your problems. What's working, what's not working. Looking at that, what advice would you give someone else? Like if this was someone else, it's easy to give advice, right? Dude, you just gotta do this, this, and this, and you're on your way. But when it's us, we take it really personally, or you know, ah, oh, that's not what I meant, or yeah, but. So remove all that. What advice subjectively would you give someone else in the situation? So those are variations of that, but that is self-coaching in a nutshell. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one. Stop settling, start living. See ya.